Hi, thank you for watching. Today we're going to be doing data analysis, just regression, very, very simple, very basic regression using Minitab. In my previous videos, we did this doing Excel, so I'm just going to take the same data, copy and paste. You can do the shift and control commands to do that. This is my Y variable. We typically put that first, ACT score, and our X variable, GPA. In my Excel sheet, I went into detail about which one was which. Your Y variable is your response variable, and your X variable is what's explaining your response variable. So, now that we have this in our um, you know, Excel-looking worksheet here, we can go to Stat for Statistics, Regression, and Fit Regression Model. Now you should see things in here and if you don't you can always go to data and change data type and then just make sure that they're actually numbers. But I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say okay my response as I mentioned before we typically put that first although if it's not first it's not the end of the world as long as you know what's what. You can double click that and the difference between continuous predictors and categorical predictors is that you first of all you never really use these unless your your predictor isn't numerical GPA is numerical so that's okay so we're gonna put GPA here in continuous predictors the, an example of categorical predictor would be something like uh, whether you are um, a mate like a certain type of major or a certain type of gender you could put categorical predictor there we are keeping it simple today. We have just one X variable. We want to do a 95% confidence interval because that's what we did in our Excel sheet in my previous video. And I opened this, so I want to actually demonstrate that, and that's what we did here. Um, this is just redundant and confusing, so I'm going to delete this. You can notice that it's the same exact thing. And if I ever delete something, I just like to get into the habit of also deleting the formatting as well. So I'm going to save that and minimize that. And okay, great. So this is 95. You can also do 90 or 99. 95 is usually the default. And as soon as I change anything there, I need Minitab to give me more Data. So I want this results table to give me my expanded tables and just go ahead and double check that all of these are checked as well. So Minitab has now calculated all of our complicated stuff. This is, you can pause and compare to the Excel sheet. It's the exact same data. And I mean, we should expect that. The only difference that you're going to see is in um, what is rounded. Excel tends to give you as many decimal points as you could possibly need, which can be a good thing for accuracy. Um, but when you display this stuff, it's actually better just to kind of, hey, I don't want that many decimal points. Now I can't see this, so I'm going to go like this. And hey, it's OK. Just give me like three or four or something. That's good enough. Um, so mini tab, you notice it gives us two, that's fine. Um, so let's scooch back over here. So our regression, and then I can adjust this so that we can see our comparative analyses here. They are exactly the same. They're just a little bit differently formatted. Mini tab takes the liberty of going, okay, here's your regression, but if I had two variables, then the other variable would be right in here, also kind of indented. Um, so they happen to be the same, that's because we only have one variable. And our coefficients, Minitab calls it a constant, Excel calls it intercept. What is it exactly? It's the y-intercept. So that means our b0, our a, however you learned it, y equals mx plus b, or our b without any subscripts at all. Um, keep in mind that this 0 and this 1, they're supposed to be subscripts. And you can do that in Excel, but I'm not that fancy. This is our regression equation that Minitab tells us. In Excel, you kind of have to, you know, make that yourself. But they they give us all the hard, they give us all the um, 
all the metadata. They give us all of the slopes and the, and the math that we you know, would otherwise have to calculate ourselves. So really it's just like, okay, so this is my B0, this is my B1, um, this is my error for each of those things. We always have an error. This is my T statistic. If P is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? Well, for regression, your null hypothesis is that all slopes equal zero. So in this case, we only have one slope. Keep in mind, B0 is not a slope. It's the y-intercept. So in this case, our HO, our H0, our null hypothesis is that B1 equals zero. So you probably guess that our HA at least, well, that our slopes are not zero, but technically speaking, at least one slope is not zero. So if we had more than one variable and we said that we would reject this and accept this thing, well, we don't know which slope is not zero. And take a second to think about what it would mean if the slope was zero. Basically, at all it means, if this one point, we, we said that this is the slope, right, in this case. So if this 1.186 was zero, then x wouldn't explain anything. Because even though x is changing, x is one, then y goes up a little bit, x is two, y goes up a little bit, x is three, y goes up a little bit, etc. But if this was zero, then x wouldn't do anything at all. Y would always be this y-intercept, 19.9. So that's a little background on regression. Keep in mind, this was all done using very random data. So the fact that we have a very small R squared and a very high standard error and a very low SSR, that's okay. But that's what those things are. That's the most important thing is that you understand that part. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and please subscribe.